A billion prayers in unison. The world waiting with bated breath as India attempts something that has never been done before. Landing on the moon's south pole, the dark side. After a 40-day journey covering almost 3.84 lakh kilometers from the Earth to the moon, the Chandrayaan-3 is all set to attempt a soft landing on the moon's south pole if the conditions are favorable for landing. Hi, Arjuna. If this does happen, we will be the first country in the world to land on the southern pole of the moon, which is also known as the dark side of the moon. Yes. Hi, Mangalam. Before I get to the exact technical stuff and what happens in the descent, I will talk about your cool t-shirt that you're wearing. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, you're dressed up for the occasion. You want to talk about it? I am forever dressed up for the occasion. You know, there have been times when multiple people keep talking about, oh, we're wearing NASA, NASA merchandise and all of that and stuff. I said, why not wear the ISRO merchandise? Because... ISRO is a little over 50 years old, um, less than 50 years since we launched our first satellite. And since then, we've launched 345 satellites. That's incredible. So it's something that needed to be worn with pride and worn all over the place as we could. And not just on Chandrayaan Day, but every day we could. All right. Uh, what a lovely gesture there. So yes, a crucial day. Uh, let's tell our viewers about a basic primer on what Chandrayaan-3 will do today. As uh, Mangala was saying, this is India's third mission to the moon after Chandrayaan-1 and 2. The previous lunar mission, Chandrayaan-2, was launched in 2019. The lander had lost the communication or even after the successful orbit and deorbit maneuvers towards the moon. The objective of Chandrayaan-3 is to make a soft landing on the moon's south pole. The lander and rover will have a mission life of one lunar day, which is about 14 Earth days, to study the surroundings there. The budget of this mission is just $75 million. Well, $75 million is just a little over 600 crore rupees. Yeah, yeah. To put that into context, yes. you know, it is one-fourth the budget of uh, the latest Mission Impossible series, which took yeah. about 2,400 crore rupees to make. And if you just add up the budget of all our space missions in recent times, it would be enough to do the budget of, uh, you know, massive sci-fi films that the West produces as well. But that's not all, you know, we have our team of reporters joining us from across the country as well, across important locations. We have Akriti Anand, who is currently at the ISRO's command center in Bengaluru. Akriti, how's the mood there? Or as they say, how's the Josh? <laughs> In just a matter of moments, India is all set to witness a historic event. Chandrayaan-3, India's third lunar mission, is all set to attempt a soft landing on the south pole of the moon's surface today at 6 p.m. The live telecast of the event will be taking place at ISRO office in Bengaluru. Just to give you a brief about Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft, the spacecraft consists of two modules. One, the propulsion module, and the other is the lander module. The lander module will be making a soft landing on the lunar surface and not the propulsion module, which is still in the orbit. So, the lander module has two components, one the rover and the other is the lander. Once the lander module is touched down, touches down on the lunar surface, the rover will come out of the lander and it will start experimenting, uh, start, uh, start the scientific experiments it has been scheduled to take place. All right, so the countdown has begun. Let's take a look at what exactly is going to happen today. So at 5.47 p.m., ISRO's ISTRAC, which is ISRO Telemetry Tracking and Command Center in Bengaluru, will issue a command that will signal Lander Vikram to begin the process to come down, to land. From the velocity of 6,000 kilometers an hour in the orbit, the spacecraft will have to slow down to a near zero in four stages of landing. Now, this phase is very tricky. It was called the 15 minutes of terror by K. Sivan, the former ISRO chief. And it is during this phase that Chandrayaan-2 crashed the last time. Another important thing, once the landing process begins, this is very important, the entire process is completely autonomous, meaning... No guidance from ISRO, but it will be driven by softwares and AI, artificial intelligence. The mission control cannot send commands once this process begins. 
this would be incredible if that happens the 15 minutes of uh, turbulence or uh, tension is something that we will have to maneuver and pray for as well but why is the chandrayaan 3 so important well for starters it will help collect data on the moon's composition help scientists learn more about the history of the moon and its evolution further data collected by chandrayaan 3 will prove to be crucial for future missions on the southern side of the moon the south pole of the moon the dark side of the moon is yet to be explored if this happens then India will be the first country in the world to do so. And because it is yet to be explored and, you know, not uh, facing the sun, there is a possibility that there could be occurrence of water and ice in that part. It could hold clues to the early solar system as well. And like I said, no country has landed yet on the moon's south pole. So while this will be an important mission for India, the larger point is that, you know, India will be leading this mission for the world itself and which is why we are getting support from every other space agency in the world as well. And uh, we have our team, like I said, across the country and across uh, the road. Uh, we have Santia Gora joining in from Mumbai's Nehru Science Museum, where a bunch of science enthusiasts have gathered for a special screening. Uh, Santia, how's the, how's the environment there? So, Mangalam, before I answer that, I uh, want to introduce you to somebody who is going to give you a run for your money. Yes. Here. Here we have our cool little scientists with their cool little t-shirts. Hello. Say hi. Hi. What's your name, dear? Stuti. Yes. Stuti, I saw you very enthusiastically. You are making this model. So, if you can tell us more about this model and how are you enjoying the process. I am enjoying this because uh, I wanted to become an astronaut and this is like mini ast astronaut because I can develop this. So... It's a really nice process and I'm enjoying it thoroughly. Okay, before I end this conversation with you, let's see all the West India. All the West India. Yeah, and this is not just Tuti. There are so many other wonderful uh, children in Mangalam. For those who actually have studied in Mumbai, uh, in Mumbai, we all know that uh, there is an annual trip to Nehru Science Center, Wally. That's a must. That's a part of your curriculum. And let's try and speak to some more children here. Uh, hello, what's your name? My name is Atharva. Okay, can you tell me this model building at what stage you are right now? Now I am at now nearly final stage and uh, our lander is nearly ready. Okay, so are you following uh, Chandrayaan 3's uh, the track, the track so far? Yeah, I am following right from the launch day. Oh, lovely. So, uh, if you can tell me, for uh, see, for most of us, the soft landing part is the most in interesting one. But any specific stage which, you know, gave you the goosebumps or you were more excited about? Uh, this is the, the la first was the launching stage, right? Okay. That was the most exciting. Okay. And now the landing will be the second stage. Perfect, perfect. And uh, let me try and bring in some more young voices. Uh, okay, I think you have made quite some progress. If you can introduce yourself, say hi to us and our viewers and tell us that what stage have you reached. Uh, hi, my name is Krish Manoj Parmar and I am from Dr. Anthony De Silva High School. So basically we have uh, completed making the lander and from this gate the rover will land on Chandrayaan 3 on 6-4. And this is a satellite which will send us the pictures of Chandrayaan, or of Moon, etc. Okay, can you tell me, according to you, what is the most interesting part of this whole mission? Because, you know, uh, you're so young at your age, what exactly engaged you? And, uh, uh, you know, as you are a part of this particular activity as well, uh, what's, what's the, uh, this thing here? So the most, uh, like, the thing which attracted me towards Chandrayaan 3 was... Try, try, but don't, you know, you see, there's a okay, thing. Yeah, try, try, yeah. don't cry. Chandrayaan 2 was a failure because of their legs, but now Chandrayaan 3 has improved the legs, and even if the thrusters which we have made here fail, this two or three thrusters fail, still the Chandrayaan 3 would land. And okay. that's the more important thing which we want, landing and improving. Absolutely. And, you know, nothing is actually a failure. Every failure is a stepping stone, another step towards success. Because when Chandrayaan 2 also tried to make a landing, uh, a soft landing, at least it's established safer places. The orbital, exactly. still, the orbital is still moving and it's giving us the information. Perfect, perfect. So, as you heard, Manglam, you know, these little scientists coming up with terms which I think... At least I don't understand some of them uh, because humanity student, of course. But let's try and bring in some more people here. Okay, I want to know anybody wants to be an astronaut or any other aspirations, you know, related to space world. 
Um, I would like to be a part of ISRO someday. Wow. <laughs> okay, and you know, uh, so when did this thought cross your mind that you want to become a scientist, a space scientist for that matter? Mainly because uh, space uh, brings in the adventure side inside me and I want to know, I'm curious to know what is there in space and I want to explore more about it. Okay, and uh, you know, what is your forecast for today's uh, soft landing? I think that it will land, surely it will land. Perfect. Let's say all the best India. Once yes, again. all the best India. So our little uh, enthusiast here, uh, Manglam, as you can see, they are more than confident, like the entire nation, that today is the day that India will create history. And finally, for the first time, there will be a soft landing at the uh, south uh, lunar path of the moon. And here we are at Mumbai's uh, Nehru Science Center with these young, science, uh, young minds, some of them aspiring to become space scientists one day. Mangalam. Thanks a lot for that, Santhya. In fact, you said that these kids could give me a run for my money. They would beat me to pulp with the kind of models that they saw, you know. They've been making models which are pretty similar to what ISRO does. The least or the maximum I could do is make this paper plane. So obviously, this is amazing, I am nowhere <laughs> close to what these guys are doing. I have to tell you, uh, what a moment. What do you think of these little kids, all of them wanting to be astronauts and perhaps taking steps to do that as well? Of course, I think it is amazing because, you know, these kind of uh, space missions, the success stories, even the failure stories. I mean, there are no failures in science, yeah. but I'm saying these kind of stories inspiring a whole generation. And I think it's only good news for our uh, space journey. And they will, I think uh, we would love to see them in ISRO and other uh, great institutions of the country. So let's go ahead and talk about ISRO itself uh, and what it has done to Chandrayaan-3. ISRO has made several upgrades after Chandrayaan-2's lander crashed. This time around, the landing area has been expanded. The spacecraft is equipped with more fuel. The lander has been given stronger legs. And the craft has more sonar panels and antennas and a major software improvement. And a lot of them actually have been made. Basically, ISRO this time around, in their words, followed a failure-based approach. Now, what does a failure-based approach mean? That they designed the mission after factoring in all the worst possible scenarios. That was rather interesting. So, like everyone said, there are no failures. You learn from them and use them as stepping stones to success. So They learned a lot from Chandrayaan-2, which was perilously close before it crashed 7.2 kilometers away from the moon. And now they've used or thought of all possible scenarios in which it can fail and equipped the lander for the same as well, Arjuna. Of course, uh, Mangalam, but Chandrayaan 2 is still helping Chandrayaan 3. Remember that uh, tweet, welcome mate. It was so <laughs> sweet. I think it garnered a lot of attention and a lot of love from people who actually have been following this mission so closely. So let's talk about uh, why we are doing this and what is the significance? What will we achieve? So simply put, the success of Chandrayaan 3 will boost India's position as a key player in space exploration. It will help India become an undisputed leader for delivering cost-effective space missions. Remember, $75 million, that's even less than Adi Purusha's budget that we've almost achieved. <laughs> Future missions to Mars and other locations uh, can greatly benefit from the findings of Chandrayaan-3. The success of this mission will also open up more investment in private space launches and satellite-based business, Mangalam. All right, so that's about uh, the Chandrayaan-3 mission. We've been getting you uh, conversations from across the country, the situation there and the excitement that the country is, uh, you know, feeling right now ahead of this major event for all of us. India's leap into space, into the moon and uh, the world jumps and steps on that as well, helps discover the southern side of the moon. We have Shivani Bazaar joining in from the CSIR headquarters in New Delhi now. Shivani, what do you have for us? Well, yes, historical day for India is India's Chandrayaan-3 attempts a soft landing on Moon's South Pole. And I'm standing here at the CSIR headquarters in New Delhi. And if I could show you, there is a special screening uh, organized here. And if I could show you the festivities around, there are rangolis being made. There are big posters of Chandrayaan over here. And there is a special screening uh, by the Department of Science and Technology that is going to be held here. And Dr. Jitender Singh will be a part of this special screening along with other 
secretaries of the Indian government, students from various schools of New Delhi and also scientists from Delhi are also expected to watch the screening from here. If I could show you inside the hall where the screening is going to take place, a lot of energy over here and if you could see a big screen has been set up for people to watch the live telecast over here and a lot of space here for people to sit and experts here suggest that the time between 5 to 6.30 p.m. will be crucial for the Chandrayaan 3, the atmosphere here very energetic but very anxious um, uh, and everyone, everyone here is excited about this historical feat that India is going to achieve in the next couple of hours but uh, certainly a lot of nervous energy also over here. Back to you Mangla. All right, a lot of nervous energy, but a fair amount of excitement. That, I think, uh, you know, sums up the environment everywhere in the country. A lot of excitement, some nervous energy, and perhaps the rest all goes to prayer. Yeah, people are praying. Schools are still uh, open. I think the screenings are happening across India. So I think uh, uh, the aim is to educate uh, students. And, of course, uh, all eyes are on that big announcement from ISRO. If all goes well um, and the conditions are favorable, the descent will begin at 5.40 IST. And uh, we'll be getting you all the live update on that uh, big story that the entire country, not just the country, the world is keeping an eye on. With that, it's a wrap. News continues on the other side. Stay tuned.